Hi team and welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, this channel is all about productivity, simplicity and living life by your own design. Today we are talking about minimal phones. For many of us modern people, we tend to use our phones a lot, but also just like the rest of the spaces in our lives, we're very good at filling them up with stuff. And often it's stuff that we don't need. If you're someone who looks at your phone and finds it very hard to find the thing that you need, or you're just in the market to make it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more user friendly, then stick around and figure out how we can make your phone work for you. The first stage is to cull things that you don't need. So I've made this a little bit simpler for you. I've made three main categories of stuff that you want to cull. The first one of these is stuff that you don't use. The first place I recommend that you look is in your utilities folder because we usually have a bunch of stuff stored in there that come with your phone that you never use and that now you can delete. Next is time wasters. So I want you to ask yourself one question and that question is how much time do I waste on my phone? And really define it as that, as wasted time. Because you might go, oh, I'm on social media for a couple of hours a day. However, I actually have and maintain a social media presence that is important for blank, blankety, blank reason, and I don't see that as wasted time. But if you do view it as wasted time, then consider this in apps that you should delete. If, however, you really, really like these apps and you would like them to still be in your life, but you would like to use them less, I want you to make a folder and that folder just simply says stuff to keep and pop those ones in there. The next one is money wasters. I want you to take a moment and think about the apps that significantly drain your bank account. These apps are usually things like ordering out, like Uber Eats or um, kind of like transport apps. So also things uh, like Didi or Ola or Uber or whatever version of those things exist in your country slash city. So if again, you would like to keep some of these, but you don't want to use them as much, then pop them in that same folder we made earlier. Otherwise, really consider if the money is worth the convenience. So next, we wanna be thinking about how we want our phone to function. But it's actually less about the functionality of our phone and it's more thinking about how you want your life to function and then programming your phone to support the life that you want. So it is that time where I want you to go and grab a pen and paper because I have some questions for you. So first off, let's consider the life that you have. What things in your life do you really, really enjoy? What things do you think are a problem? What things would you like to see solved? And what things would you like to be just that little bit easier? because guaranteed there's an app out there to help you in all of these things. For example, I wish that um, posting to my social media was a little bit easier. I don't like the amount of time that I spend day to day posting something, especially when I do post every day and it is for my business account. Then getting an app like Later, which means I can schedule in my posts and it will post it for me, means that I need to sit down once every two months, schedule all of my posts, and then it will just roll it out for me. So try and find apps that support this. Note what you want to be easier and source an app for that. Next is think about the life that you want. What habits do you currently have that you want to break? What habits do you currently have that you want to continue to build? So for example, if you wish that you would learn something new every day, if you wish that you were constantly learning, then getting something like Audible will support that life that you want to build. If you want your life to be more social, then getting things uh, that connect you with groups of people might be really important. Getting things um, like Yelp might be really important. Finding places where you can go out and have drinks with people might be super important. Getting something like WhatsApp where you can super easily talk to all of your friends might be a good way to solve this. So now that you've kind of defined these areas that you want to work on in your life, populate your phone with apps that support that. 
So now we are on to step three, which is organizing your phone. So I'm gonna take you through the process that I use to organize my phone. Um, if you were with me for last week's video, you'll kind of see that layout that I used. I'll link that video to look, uh, below if you're interested in watching that one. Uh, it kind of goes through the final product of what this process looks like. So we want to make the setup of our phone match the way that we want our life to function. So on our first page, we want it to be the things that we want to be the priorities for our life. And the best way to prioritize these things are by your needs and by your wants. And I really want you to sit down and think through need. Is it a necessity for your life? So it might be things like calculator. Like you might be a budgeting queen and you need your calculator a lot. You need it almost every day. So it might be super valuable to have on that first page. If you're like me and you find that to be almost non-entity-ish, put that one in the utilities folder, file it out of the way so that you don't really have to look at it. And then also populate it with things that support the life you want. So again, if we're going back to our earlier example, if you want your life to be full of learning more, then add in apps like Audible. If you want to be fluent in four languages, add in apps like Duolingo. And if these are things that you want to be priorities in your life, put them on that first page. Another thing that I am very much a stickler for is your work should not be on this first page. This is not a place for work, this is a place for your personal time and personal growth. Your second page, however, can be all about work. So this is places where Again, I don't recommend putting your work email onto your phone, but if you are an independent or a freelancer and you actually need that access there, then a million percent put it in there. Uh, it's also places where you could put things like scheduling apps if you need those for your work, spreadsheet apps if it's a work oriented thing. Any of those that you find to be work supportive, second page. And then your third page is where you can fill with things which are your time wasters and your money wasters. The ones that you still want to have access on your phone, but you want to use them less. I would also recommend putting them in an unnamed folder way down the end so the icon isn't immediately apparent. It seems simple, but trust me, it's very, very effective. Because the first thing you do when you look at your phone, it will remind you of the things that you want to do, the life that you want to access. And next week we are back on the productivity trains. So if you're keen to see that video, then just make sure you're subscribed and ring the little bell so that you are reminded when that one goes live. Also, if you enjoyed this video and would like more videos like this one, just click the like button and drop me a comment to let me know and I'll be sure to include some more. As always, thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.